Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. I guess we'll start with this just from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com, then we'll talk more about it. John Huber, known as Brody Lee, and AEW Luke Harper in WWE, has passed away at the age of 41. Huber's wife, Amanda, wrote in an Instagram post he had died from a non-COVID-19 related lung issue. AW posted the following statement on their social media. The All Elite family, heartbroken in an industry filled with good people. John Huber was exceptionally respected and beloved in every way. A fierce and captivating talent, thoughtful mentor, and simply a very kind soul that starkly contradicted his persona as Mr. Brody Lee. John's love for his wife Amanda, children Brody and Nolan was evident to all of us who were fortunate to spend time with him. We send out love and support to his beautiful family today and always. John's popularity among his peers and influence on the wrestling world was worldwide. Transcended AEW as loss will be felt by many for a long time. We are privileged at AEW to call John Huber a brother, a friend, and one of our own. At the most recent AEW Dynamite tapings held two weeks ago, there was a segment at the end of the tapings where Kenny Omega, quote, lost the AEW world title to Huber's son Brody. Brody was announced as the new champion by AEW announcer Justin Roberts. Starting his career in 2003, joined WWE in 2012, regularly teamed with Bray White, Eric Rowan as the White family. After requesting his release from WWE earlier in 2019, it was granted December 8th under the name Mr. Brody Lee, made his debut for AEW in the March 18th edition of Dynamite, revealing himself as the exalted one, the leader of the Dark Order stable, that members had been hyping, started a feud with Cody, defeating him for the TNT title on the August 22nd edition of Dynamite, putting him out of action for several weeks. Cody returned and faced Lee in what could be, or what would be, Uber's final match, a dog collar match for the TNT title on the October 7th edition of Dynamite. Cody won the match, regained the title. Uber and his wife Amanda have two sons, Brody and Nolan. Huber is well regarded for being a family man. So we're not going to do any sort of speculation here obviously, but I can tell you what I know, and that is that about two months ago, I was told by somebody that Brody was in the ICU, and this was from somebody that had heard it from somebody else, and neither of us could find anybody else who could confirm this. So I was concerned, and for the last two months, I mean, me and this other person were basically asking each other if we'd heard anything, and neither had. And I know that within AEW, there were some people that knew, but there were a lot of people that did not know because his family did not want the word out. And so most people just were not told anything. And I know that there were other people in AEW that had only heard the same thing that me and this other person had heard, that at some point... He had been in the ICU. Now, the last thing that I had heard was like two months ago. And so, as a person who likes to think things are going to be all right, for two months, I had been thinking, okay, like, he was in the ICU, allegedly. We don't even know for sure, but it's been two months. At some point, if this were really bad, like, we'd know something, right? So, I thought... Something must have happened. He was in the ICU. Now he's recovering. And dude, I was just waiting. Like he's going to make his big return on Dynamite. He's going to make his his big return on being the elite. I was just waiting for this big return. So then it was like a week and a half ago or whatever. I heard that his son had done the angle where he had beaten Kenny Omega. And... When I heard that, obviously my first thought was, Brody had to be there. He had to be there. Why would his kid be there and Brody's not there? And if his kid's there and Brody's not there, like, we'd have to know something, right? So I figured, and then I asked, and nobody who I asked answered if if Brody had been there or not. And when nobody answered if he'd been there or not, I was thinking, dude, I don't think he was there. And then I, when I heard about the angle, I was like, I don't think this is good. And so when I, and still when I got the text yesterday, I still couldn't even believe my eyes when I read it. I just, I, I read it like, oh, Brody's a great guy and everything's good and blah, blah, blah. That's what I read in my brain. But I saw at the top 
the 1979 to 2020. And then I started getting all the texts. Social media just absolutely flooded. I mean, there's a line here in this report on the front page about how respected Brody Lee was. I mean, go on Twitter. I mean, I can't even remember. And this is not to downplay anybody's passing. I don't remember anybody anytime recently that had an outpouring from every company, from everybody, like like Brody Lee got. Huber was well regarded for being a family man. That doesn't even begin to explain how much he loved his family. I mean, this story is so horrible. It's so terrible. And just somebody put a list somewhere. Number one, family man. These were the things that Brody loved in his life. Number one was his family. And number two was wrestling. I've heard stories today. I mean, this guy loved wrestling like nobody's business. And, I mean, I could talk a lot more about Brody, but we'll give Mike a chance to say something here. This sucks. I, I swear to you, I cannot remember the last death in wrestling that hit me like this one. I mean, you have to go back to 2006, 2007, like Eddie Guerrero. It's horrible. So, any thoughts, Mike? I'm just shocked. Saturday was a terrible day. Um, I woke up to Danny Hodge passing away. <clears throat> and for me, Danny Hodge was the first pro wrestler that I put on a pedestal because I liked amateur wrestling and I love pro wrestling. And there's the, the epitome of both in a lot of ways is Danny Hodge, you know, arguably the greatest uh, wrestler produced in America ever. I mean, Kale Sanderson and Pat Smith, Dan Gable, you know, it's arguable that, that Danny Hodge is not, as great if not i mean so great that the amateur wrestling award in case those who don't watch the ncaa's is named the dan hodge trophy and the stories of him as a legendary tough guy as a good guy as a nice guy who is is the stories about him are amazing uh breaking his neck in the car accident and holding his neck into place as he breaks out of the car which is slid into the water and he breaks out of it and he climbs back and he goes and gets help all with one hand because he's holding his neck into place and that's how i woke up on saturday morning and then it's bookended saturday night by being shocked you know danny hodge was 88 years old this was going to happen at some point even though it's really very sad I didn't know about John Huber. I didn't know about Brody Lee's, uh, some of the issues that he was having with his lungs. I didn't know. So for this to all come, I knew something was up because he wasn't on TV, but I was so sideswiped by all of this. And I've only spoken to him a couple of times. And big hockey fan, you know, when you find other hockey fans, you tend to gravitate towards them. And he was a big hockey fan, but... You know, you can, and I put this on Twitter last night, but you can measure a pro wrestler by whatever metrics that you want. You can measure a man by how he treats his family and by how those around him speak about him. And there's a lot that's being spoken about John Huber right now because, as Brian mentioned, there's not one person that is saying anything negative about Brody Lee. Not one person uh, saying that everybody to a person is saying how much he loved his family, how important that was. And it's just a shocking, it's just shocking. And I know I'm sure there's probably Paul in Barbersville. There's other people that are going to be calling us in the next couple of days with, with memories that they have of him inside the wrestling ring. But I have a feeling we're also going to be hearing a lot about some of the, the nice things that he did outside of it and some of the impacts and the connections that he made outside of it because they were vast and, just an awful situation for a very nice man and a very good young family. And I hope AEW, they said they were going to take care of him. And uh, I think it was Matt Jackson who, who said on Facebook last night in response to Brody's wife's post about his situation that they were going to be family members for life. And uh, I hope that's going to be the case because this is a tragic situation that uh, very, very sad. I got a moment of Observer Live. If you love these video clips... Head down there to the bottom right-hand side of the screen and click Join. For just $7.99 per month, you get full access to all of the episodes. Over 300 at current count. Full-length episodes of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, and Figure Four Daily with both Landstorm and Filthy Tom Lawler. You can also hit that subscribe button, and you'll always be alerted as to when new shows are available.